Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of my 3D printed Star Wars R2-D2 project. This is an R2 that I made a few years ago out of wooden plastic and resin cast parts. The aim of this project, check out part one, is to make an entirely 3D printed R2-D2. So last time I knocked up some CAD drawings for the frame structure and started to print them out. I've done a little bit more to it since then with a couple more uprights but um, essentially I'm going to try and finish the frame in this video. So all these parts are printed with 30% infill in a rectilinear pattern, which means the frame is about three times lighter than it would be if it were made of solid sheet material. All of these uh, parts are basically 10 mil thick. They're made with two 5 mil prints, which are stuck back to back, and all the parts are ABS, so they're chemically welded together with acetone. That's made quite a rigid structure. Um, it's quite a lot more rigid than the styrene frames that get built, and I'm going to attempt to leave the skins off this so you can see the mechanics inside. You can tell from the big hole in here, we're hoping to have the two to three leg conversion going on, so the centre foot will drop out, um, and this will basically be an open frame so you can see inside and see all the mechanics. So, let's have a look at some more parts being printed. So I moved all the printers into um, another room in the house because it's getting really noisy. So um, I've only got two running at the moment, but I've got my Lulzbot AO101. I've got the Taz 3, which is currently printing some parts for Alien there, which is the one with the Flexi Dually Dual Extrude on. And I've got the Taz 4, which I unboxed a few weeks ago, which is currently dedicated to printing the R2-D2 parts. So we left the last video looking at uh, this frame. Um, so far I've got the next layer on, which is another 5mm layer. The two side pieces, which in themselves are made of two 5mm layers. And I've also got part way through the next ring up. And then what's printing now is the next ring up from that. So this is my layer 5 and layer 6 parts. So each layer, each ring, is made of two layers stuck back together. So the very bottom one is 1 and 2, then 3 and 4, and this is the third ring up. So it's layer 5 and 6. So stuck layer 5 together edge to edge, making sure they all align. And then in a moment I'll flip this over and the layer 6 gets stuck on the back of that. So they get stuck on back to back. And all of these notches should hopefully align. So I'm using acetone to weld these parts together. So I've got my acetone in a pot and my ABS dissolved in acetone. All of this is ABS plastic, so it dissolves in acetone and we can make a chemical weld. So once I've got these other pieces stuck on the back, then these slots align with the uprights in the piece that I made. So we'll be sticking this on and then we'll be working our way up to the next ring, which is actually currently printing. So I've got three of my sections for uh, level six stuck on the back of five, so I've just got uh, two parts there where I need to stick the final part on, so that fits quite neatly in there and aligns with the slot in the edge for the uh, verticals. So these have been printed flat on the bed, so the back of them is incredibly flat. So I don't really need any filler there. I've got this uh, ABS dissolved in acetone to make a paste to fill in any gaps. And we can fill in some of the seam lines between the sections on the same level. What I've done with the other three is just used acetone. It's a rather dirty pot of acetone, normally it's clear. Um, we need to do this in a well ventilated area because we're actually dissolving the ABS. And we'll just spread this all over, work it a bit on both pieces and then clamp them together. And that's the fourth section and then we can stick that on the um, top of the rest of the assembly. Let's just get this. Yes, it only evaporates quite quick so I need to perhaps just go over that first coat again. Stick this in place, feel it's tacky. Just get that aligned in both places. I'm just clamping these on with clamps and uh, the very end ones I'm clamping onto the table so that you can get more pressure on it. And then just sticking as many clamps as I can find all along the piece until the acetone goes off. So there's my whole ring done. I've got four slots in the front here, which are for the four supports, and the two slots in the back for the uh, rear vertical supports. In the underside, we've got these two recesses cut out of one layer, which fit on the stilts from the previous layer. So if we just get that 
So there again is the front with the four slots, the back with the two slots. So now these the recesses fit onto these stilts, so that should fit neatly on there. Let's just see. Yeah, that fits pretty well. So actually what I left was a curved piece in the outside here to match the curved contour of the slot. So that fits in and then we get that consistent curve. And these flats here that we can see are actually to allow the uh, battery boxes to slide back when it goes into two leg mode. So that's the next layer. We just need to get that welded on and then continue printing and building. So we're still printing away. We're doing now the some of the vertical pieces. I've got a couple here and some already stuck to the frame. So I've got one vertical installed which goes up to the third ring and then the rest of them go taller up to the bottom rings. So some of these parts I got printed at the Sandown Park Model Engineering Show. Have a look at the vlog for that. And some of the other parts I got printed in Fairham. So I've now got my top two rings. So that's all of the rings and I've just got to print off the rest of the parts for this vertical and then the other four and then we should have most of the frame together. Here is the last vertical, so these are again made in 5mm sections which go back to back and this one I've already stuck to back to back so that goes together to make the entire vertical section for the front right so uh, basically we've got four sections and obviously the seams are offset there so they're not right opposite each other so we'll get those stuck together and we should be to stick that to the frame. So my vertical is all together and that should fit in here so it should be quite a good fit. Yeah, there we go. So that slots in and that'll also get acetone welded in. So uh, this frame is actually feeling extremely rigid. So I've got the top ring still to put on. Um, but let's weld that in and we'll weigh it and have a look at it and see how it comes out. So here's my whole frame. The whole thing is together now. So I've printed all of the parts. So just to give you an idea of the time, each one of the eight of one of the rings was about an hour. So each ring like that took eight hours. So that's 16 hours. And then obviously, so we're talking about more than 32 hours for all of the rings. The bottom one was slightly longer because it's got those extra sections, plus the bottom, plus all the verticals. On average, a piece of the vertical took an hour. So that's another four hours per vertical. So it's probably 50 or 60 hours of 3D printing in there. So it's all acetone welded together. What I haven't done is fix the top ring on yet, and that's because there's still a recess here, and one corresponding one there, and that's where the shoulder piece fits on. So um, this fits very neatly on here, but it's not acetone welded on yet, because I need to insert those uprights, which basically have a bearing mounted for the um, legs to move, and will also hold some of the mechanism to motorize it. Uh, but apart from that it's all complete so um, this is actually incredibly rigid there's a bit of play between those two layers but not much um, obviously lots of these have these panels in this way so that's really rigid there's going to obviously be another one here where the um, art of the legs are attached at the shoulder um, and also we've got the side vents to fit in here so again there's going to be another section and the back of that side vent assembly is probably going to hold some motors that actually motorise the legs, which is why I haven't made that part either. On top of that, we've got the vents and features um, to go down the front here. So at the moment, there's a tiny bit of skew, but not very much at all. And obviously, putting the vents in here is going to tie those two uprights together. Um, the same there with the power coupler. And you'll notice I've left some of the corners off. So I've got these corners to brace it, but here they're missing. And that's due to the uh, pocket vent that fits in there, the coin slot that fits in there. So I've left the corner there very sharp so that we can fit those features in. And that's also the same at the back here for the corresponding um, pocket vent. So um, I'm pretty impressed with how rigid this is. I'm going to weigh it in a moment, but it's incredibly lightweight as well. I've got some postage scales here. So I'm just going to put the frame on here and we'll have a look and see how much it weighs. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. It's pretty much exactly what I predicted and hoped for. So I don't know if you can see that. I might have to look down there. But basically it weighs three, oh, I'm resting on the frame, 3.01 kilograms. So basically almost exactly three rolls of filament. So that's pretty good. Um, obviously the parts are only 30% solid. So I'm pretty happy with that. 
So that means the cost of this, I'm paying $18.99, a roll of filament, including VAT and delivery from a company called 3D Filler Print in the UK. So uh, basically that's three lots of those, so that's about £57 to print all of that in money. And as I say, 50 to 60 hours of printing. But it only weighs three kilograms because it's only 30% solid. It, obviously if you did it 10% solid, you could even save some more money and time as well on that. Might not be quite as rigid, but I'm pretty impressed with how that's come out. I was worried I'd have to put partial skins on to keep it rigid, but I don't think I'm going to have to. I think it's going to be fine as it is, just with the features sort of floating there. It's time to talk about the missing plate, which goes in between the top two rings, and that's of course the shoulder where the leg hinges. So the fixing centre for that is something like uh, 98 millimetres, so just under 100 mil from the top, so about here. And that's why I've got this flat piece here, was to allow the hub to rotate over it. And normally that uh, round hub would go within, into, inside the skins there. So uh, we need to make, a, it's easy to make a 3D printed plate, but basically the legs can be quite wobbly because they're quite long. So we need to make sure whatever we do, um, is, uh, that hub is quite braced and it also needs to be motorised. So um, I didn't want to use really expensive bearings and I was considering 3D printing some plastic bearings with perhaps wheels that go round in a hole. Uh, but in the end I've decided to put some metal work in. So I found these bearings which are actually Lazy Susan bearings. Uh, I've got three different sizes here. Those are the 150 mils, the 100 mils and the 75 mils. Um, I think those are a bit too small and the, the larger ones are too big. But the 100 mils seem just about right, so obviously they've got screw holes in the corners. So that's where the round hub would screw on. So that seems just about the right size. So these um, are designed to work flat down on the table with something on top there. So basically a turntable. They're not particularly good if you use them on their side and they also have quite a bit of slop in them. So obviously if you pull them apart or brace them they don't rotate quite as well as when the ball bearings are squashed. So the plan is to use a pair of these on each leg, like so, and then basically use the hole in the middle so I can have some uh, metal studding with nuts on that actually pull them together. So as far as the bearing is concerned, they're basically both squashed to each other. So the two of these will fit either side of a 3D printed plate and the two outside pieces will rotate together. That also gives me scope to run some fixed rods through the middle there so that I can use that to build a, paral a parallelogram inside the leg so that I can keep the bottom, well basically the foot parallel with the top so it doesn't topple over into leg mode. Here is my other droid's leg. So um, basically this one isn't motorised and it's just fixed and this is a hinge here which is just free to move. Um, which is fine in three leg mode but obviously in two leg mode when it's standing straight up on here this can't be free to move so we need to basically tie this to the top so essentially what people do as well as having the hinge at the top and bottom is having another rod that runs down I'm in fact going to have two that run down to make a parallelogram so that the uh, foot and the top are always parallel which means it can stand up in two leg mode provided at the shoulder we can fix that in position with a motor and this angle that we've got here is 36 degrees from the um, vertical of the droid. So we also need some end stops to make sure that um, the motor or whatever pushes it into position can push it against an end stop and it can sit there rather than the motor having to hold it in position. And then we can constrain this shoulder so it only fits uh, within that, that piece of rotation. After quite a lot of thought, I've come up with these drawings. So the purple and green plate are again two sections stuck back to back. The green one is quite thick, it's 15mm thick, so I'm hoping that's going to print okay without warping. And the purple one is 5mm um, with a lump stuck on. So obviously where we've got those squares, we've got a slight recess on the outside one, which is the green one, where uh, basically the 1mm steel from the bearing will fit in there and obviously screw into the corners. And the purple one faces the inside of the droid. And um, obviously we've got that lump there to make sure that the corners of that bearing can clear the internal curved piece from the frame. So we've got some interesting shaped holes in there. So we've got the... Uh, a centre hole obviously which is the centre pivot and then the top and bottom curved grooves 
um, are there to allow 6 mil studding, which goes right through this, um, to have end stops, so obviously upright and 36 degrees for the angle of the leg as I showed you. Um, the other two holes there are going to be fixed bits of studding for the parallelogram, which go all the way through, and those go into the curved grooves on these hubs. So again, that means we've got basically two bit or four bits of studding and four holes which can strain the leg to its 36 degree movement. Um, and the ones that are fixed to the green and purple piece are the parallelogram pieces that run then shafts hinged all the way down to the foot to keep it parallel. So the big holes I've got here in the very top and bottom of these hubs are, are basically to allow me to get a screwdriver in so that I can screw on the screws in the corner of the green and the purple piece because otherwise um, with the bearings back to back there on these big plates there's no way to put the screws in. So um, there's also a recess on the inside of the hubs that's to allow for some uh, the heads of the nuts which are also recessed into the green plate there as well so that um, we can actually fix those fixed bits of studding on. So um, the hubs themselves obviously the outside one is going to be attached to the leg so that's the one that's closest to us at the moment. The other one inside um, is going to need some further modification and these hubs are of course constrained together to squash the bearings through the holes of the mounting plate through the top and bottom holes on that purple mounting plate. So uh, basically we bolt these hubs together and squash them right up so the bearings work properly. Um, and the inside one is of course the actuator so it's where the motor will drive it to um, actually move the leg so uh, typically people use linear actuators which you can find quite cheaply on eBay so the inside one here needs some modification um, if I'm going to use a linear actuator it needs a lever on it sticking out one side that can be pulled downwards within the frame uh, my plan however is actually to try and use um, a geared motor and a drive belt to actually free up space in the body of the droid for the centre foot mechanism which I still need to design and some other bits and pieces so I think this centre hub is um, or the inside hub I should say is going to get turned into a toothed gear or a toothed um, pulley so that we can actually use a Ninja Flex 3D printed drive belt to drive it from a motor which we'll have a look at later on in the project so uh, for now I'm going to print these green and purple plates which of course are all going to be printed in white plastic and I'm probably going to print the outside hub and see how the bearings and all the bits and pieces fit together. That's more pieces of Alien getting printed and the TAS4 is doing the 15mm high section. I've already done the 5mm section with the lump on that goes on the inside, that's come out okay. Didn't get any warpage in the corners. But we'll have to see what happens with this one as the build gets higher and higher. Hopefully at least the 5mm sections where that plugs into the chassis will be okay. And then those get stuck back to back. We're getting there with 2 hours 51 in. You can see it's doing the solid flat surface there for the recess. So the rest of this is only 1mm higher. And so far the corners are still all stuck on. So there's no warping yet. Basically I've put the bed up to 100 degrees, um, the recommended temperature for ABS is 85 on this bed which is a silicon heater, and it's quite a big bed so it radiates a lot of heat so I've actually put it much higher to keep the part warm and um, that seems to be going quite well so I'm expecting that to be fine. Uh, when it cools there might be a bit of warping but um, so far it's still well stuck on the bed so that's looking pretty good. So both halves of my uh, upright there are printed. The 15mm one came out absolutely fine. And the 5mm one with a lump on the inside is absolutely fine as well. So um, basically I've got this recess here. So I've got my uh, Lazy Susan bearing um, and that fits in there perfectly. So that will make that rotating hub. And then of course on the inside, we've got another Lazy Susan bearing which fits on that piece. So both of these will rotate together and they are both clamped together. It's rather hard to see from there, but basically they're both clamped together with some 6mm studding. And the 6mm studding goes right through those holes in the middle there um, to clamp them and acts as the end stop on these curved grooves, as well as the two fixed ones that I mentioned, which come right through to the outer leg or at least to the outer part or the inner part of the leg I should say to make two uh, vertical pieces for the parallelogram to hold the foot 
and I've got those recesses there to hold the nuts so that the nuts don't bind on the bearing. So altogether I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to be printing the hubs now and of course the opposite version of this which I have to make sure I do a mirror image so that the legs rotate the opposite way. So this is the front and this is the back. So my legs rotate backwards and the other, obviously the other one has to be the other way round. So that is looking pretty good. So here it is. I've acetone welded in this piece at the top it's still not welded in. So this comes off until I've of course done the other side. But this is feeling incredibly rigid and I think as I put these um, extra welds on it's going to get even more rigid so I'm really happy with that. But you'll have to check out the next video to see what happens with my motorised shoulder hub. So don't forget to subscribe and check out the other videos in my channel for some other projects. And check back for the next R2D2.